um, I will set, just send you the link, James, afterwards. So, good. So, I think if, I, if we make a start around the room with introductions, but and then we'll see if anyone else has dropped in. I know there is definitely one person coming at about 10 past, so we'll, we'll see how we go. And uh, thank you for joining us today. I'll let, obviously let Kevin introduce himself, and, and that's uh, best left to him. But uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Matthew, chairman of the New Forest Business Partnership. Uh, also owner of two hospitality businesses in the New Forest, uh, which is why I'm fortunate enough to be able to be off next week, because after that, it's all a go. Um, hey. Satch Cottage Hotel in Brockenhurst, Tea Room and Gym Bar, that opens on the 17th of May. Don't get me into why hospitality has been left till last, because it's completely wrong, immoral, and but there we go. Um, so we will get going on the 17th of May. We're pretty much fully booked as a hotel till the beginning of November now. So that's great news. Yep. Um, and I also have escape yachting, taking people out on day trips out on the Solent. It's a tricky one because we can technically do it and we've been doing it. We've been out today, but it's um, various stages of restriction. And so we were for our big trips, which are shared charter where couples and individuals can join together and come on a boat we've left that till june uh, but we'll see we'll review after the may the 17th uh, sort of uh, hurdle is passed and see how we go but uh, yeah really strong bookings for the day trips on the solent uh, obviously our overseas business is uh, dead in the water uh, at the moment we're supposed to be in croatia now we wouldn't be in um, Canada in June, uh, in September, and in the Caribbean in the winter. So we've had about a year off from those holidays, which are of course all work. Uh, and uh, we will uh, hopefully be back. I'm hoping for Vancouver in September. I mean, there's no reason why not, but uh, wait, well, it's a wait and see. So interesting times with the business, but fortunately the government support has uh, sort of carried us through. The hotel will have been closed 10 months out of 15 by the time we reopen. So hospitality's had a massive hit. And even those guys who are open now, well, only 23% of, of pubs are open and they're all losing money because obviously it's reduced capacity. Mm. So get out there as much as you can and, and support them. Um, but uh, certainly once we get to the 17th of May, that'll be a really good point. So James, over to you. Uh, thank you, Matthew. And um, yeah, this is my first time with the, the, the New Forest Group, so really, really pleased to be uh, here and I've signed up for lots of things, so it's great. So uh, keep up the, the good work, Matthew and colleagues. So uh, yes, my name is James Rimmer. I live in the New Forest, so I live in Asher, so I feel I can, can join the group, so that's, um, that's good. Uh, I, uh, my business is a franchise, so it's part of expense reduction analysis and uh, kind of we do what it says on the tin, really. We work with businesses to help reduce their overhead costs, be that stationary water, or all sorts of bits and pieces. We have experts around the world that help organisations um, reduce their expenditure, which um, is okay in this current climate. And generally, actually, in times of recession or challenge, generally um, in, in great demand. So, uh, yeah, no, really pleased to be part of the group. So, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing more as it goes on. Excellent. Thanks very much, James. Uh, Andrew, good afternoon to you. Hi, hey, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Oh, sorry, wrong one. You go. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, there are two Andrews. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> you keep going, um, and Andrew Prismal, you keep going. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, Andrew Prismal from HW Conveyancing Searches, as you can probably see from behind me. Um, uh, been a group for a, a little while now and um, thoroughly enjoying it and getting a lot from it. I've, um, we, we avoid people getting uh, nasty surprises after they've bought a, a home, their new home. So uh, we help solicitors find out all the nasty problems up front before they exchange contracts and, uh, and complete that move. Um, but uh, yeah, really interested in today. I, I have, I must admit, I've only read a couple of business books, but it's funny how of all the books I've ever read, there's a couple of things in there that just keep coming back to me and I keep on thinking of them in certain situations. So they kind of stay with you. You know, it's, it's very interesting. Great. Well, thank you. And, you know, let's, we're going to have a conversation about the value of business books as well, because we're mm -hmm. finding it a value. 
but um, clearly the fact there aren't 100 people or all 9,000 businesses on this call, <laughs> that people do need persuading. So um, if, if only, Matthew, if only. I know, I know. It's just, it's just one of those things. Nobody has any time anymore. But uh, Andrew has time to join us. So thanks. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Matthew. Um, Andrew Rumsey from Portland, a firm of insolvency practitioners that work through predominantly Dorset and Hampshire. I live in Bournemouth. The office is based over in Whiteley. Um, so New Forest is right in between the two of us. So I hope that gives me enough of an excuse to be here. Yeah, you um, come through the New Forest most days, do you? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, perfect. And yeah, so we help businesses in two circumstances. One, if they're in financial distress and need advice on, on how to mm -hmm. resolve that or work their way through it. And the other is where companies who are solvent and are looking, the, the uh, directors of shareholders are looking to retire or sell the business and they've got a pot of cash they want to get and distribute. Uh, we do that through solvent liquidations, uh, which is a tax efficient way of getting the money out for them. And that, that's me. Great, thanks very much. And Fiona, good afternoon to you. Hello, I'm very sorry about my picture. My computer is a bit slow, so... Um... Anyway, it's still working. It's, it's all working well now, so thank you. Okay. Um, so Fiona Mobbs here of Your Colour and Style, helping predominantly women uh, get the wardrobe of their dreams and appropriately dress for whatever they're doing. And the second business I have is writing bespoke poetry for people for any occasion. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So as I say, there are, Kevin, there are a couple of other people. Here comes one. You know, Nikki said she would be about 10 past, so that's perfect. We'll give a quick introduction from her and then over to you. So, Nikki, welcome. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Matthew. Apologies again for being late. That's all right. You've timed it perfectly. We've just gone round the room, so you'll have to guess who everyone else is. Oh, my God. But you, have, but you have a chance to tell them who you are. But just a oh, quick my God. Up. Stop that on the spot at the moment. You're dashing yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, just, just, just let everyone know who you are and your business, and then I'll hand over to Kevin. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. And of course, it's been late. I hate being late, but um, I got I'm, I'm unavoidably delayed. Uh, my name is Nikki Whitfield, and um, I'm part of the Brilliant People Group, and uh, I'm a transformational coach. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. So, Kevin, that gives you an idea. The New Forest is full of lots and lots of really interesting businesses. You know a lot of them yep. very well, because this is your patch as well. So, thanks for joining us today, and uh, over to you to take us on a roller coaster ride. Oh. Okay, right, let me uh, share my screen there. Make sure I can still see everybody. Uh, yep, that's all working well. <clears throat> I can see, see who I'm talking to as well. Uh, good, so um, I, when, I, when I was sort of preparing this, I was sort of thinking, right, like, uh, how, how can I give you guys the best value? So I thought, well, I'm not going to sort of talk through every chapter and uh, read every every page of the book. Um, but I thought I'd give you a bit of a, an insight to how the book came about, you know, and why you know, I wrote a book. Uh, I don't know, has anybody else here written book, a book? Uh, I have. You have one, <laughs> Fiona. Uh, but, uh, well, there was sort of the, the, the essence of the book, the roller coaster ride of business ownership was also the roller coaster ride of writing a book because it actually took me four years uh, to write uh, this uh, this particular book, um, it sort of yeah, as as all books do, they start a lot before that. You know, is really sort of through my history and where I've come from. So I thought I'd give you just a, a bit of an overview of uh, my sort of you know, how I got to where I am today. So I started uh, as a, a chartered accountant. So I trained many many years ago, uh, and my my dream then was to become a partner in a, an accountancy firm. Uh, which I sort of achieved at the age of 28. Um, I was just about to sign the partnership agreement and I decided at the age of 28, I was far too young to become a partner in a stuffy old accountancy firm. So I jumped ship and I went to work for a couple of brothers, fourth generation horticulturalists, uh, who were just starting to sell flowers into the supermarkets. And we took that business to over 4 million turnover in about four years. 
And that led me on to working with a Dutch company who were the largest importer of cut flowers into the UK. And we took a brownfield site into probably the largest packing facility in the UK, if not Europe, um, who supplies Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer's. Uh, every pretty much bunch of flowers you'll see uh, would have probably come through uh, this factory at some stage. And that was employing 400 people by the time I left. And the reason I left was I, by that time I was uh, sort of mid, late 30s. And like a lot of people at that sort of age, you start to sort of question what the hell are you doing with your life? I was traveling every week up to Lincolnshire and Hull. I uh, spent most of my Friday nights on a motorway somewhere, uh, eating dinners at a motorway services, spending evenings sitting in hotel rooms, um, loving the work that I was doing, but, you know, wasn't really adding much value to my own, my own life. I'd also got to a stage where these businesses were such a size that they needed their own full time FD. But I didn't really understand while we'd grown really successful businesses. So this one was now turning over about 36 million. Um, I'd done it for a number of years, but I didn't really understand how they'd grown. You know, for, for a lot of businesses, you, you jump you jump on this roller coaster and it takes you somewhere. And that is either to a, a massive factory like this or for, for other people like my father, who started a business back in the 80s. Uh, it takes you off the edge of a cliff and your business goes pop and you never work again. So I wanted to understand, well, what is it? You must be able to go somewhere and learn how to build businesses. You know, you can't, you know, loads and loads of people are doing it. So I decided to take a year out. And I went back to university to do an MBA. I did a two-year MBA um, I degree. I can't hear you. Hello, Amanda. Hi. Sorry. Oh, can you hear us now? Yeah. Hi. Good. Hi there. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You're, you're with us. Yeah. Um, so I did a two-year MBA uh, in nine months. And uh, I loved it. It uh, goes go back to what Matthew was saying. We never have enough time to read books. I'd probably read three books from, from the moment I finished my qualification here uh, in accountancy to the MBA. And uh, I think those were two John Grisham books. Um, and that was about it. And I went into this MBA and suddenly I was thrust upon you know, management books and business books. And I actually loved it. You know, I really loved getting into learning stuff that was relevant to what I was doing. Uh, and relevant to where I'd been and relevant to where I was going to go. So I came out of uh, the MBA thinking, what the hell do I do now? And as luck had it, I bumped into uh, what was back then Action International, which is now Action Coach. And it was an organization that I had a real affinity with. It was there to help small businesses, you know, own and manage businesses, people that are on this journey to actually build successful businesses that work without them but get a little bit stuck along the way. You know, they're working too many hours, not making enough money or lose sight of the goal. Why are we in business in the first place? So I spent uh, the first sort of seven years actually learning my trade as, as the only one I know Nick is sort of into coaching as well. You know, there's a lot of learning and in the early days you sort of pretend that you know what you're doing <laughs> and enough people sort of buy into it to believe you. Uh, but then over the years, you get more and more experience. And uh, about uh, three years ago, we moved into our second office, which uh, some of you might have seen it, although it's been closed for the last year, uh, down in Swaysling. And uh, we were sort of starting to build a team of coaches. And last year, uh, in well, actually for 2020, but in 2021, I was actually given the accolade of being the, uh, the coach of the year in, uh, in our area. Uh, within Action Coach as well. So I'm, I'm very much in that. If you're going to do something, be the best you can possibly be. So that sort of brings us to, to where we are. Now, during that sort of journey, um, I read, I mean, I've, I've got uh, tons and tons of books. I, I probably not, I don't read as many as I used to, uh, but I've gained so much from reading books over the years that there was that little voice in the back of my head that said, look, you need to write a book, you know, you just need to get all of these facts and the way that you look at business and the way that you look at the world into, um, 
into writing. So as a result of that, I wrote my first book, which was, um, it was an okay book. Uh, it's uh, 11 Key Strategies for Building a Business. It's a little bit textbooky. It's a little bit sort of anybody could have written it. It's just taken some of the key strategies that I've learned over the years and actually put in, in into into words. Uh, I didn't publish it. It's it was more of a hand, a give out to uh, people I met to say, look, if you're interested in growing your business, have a read of that. And that sort of got me sort of into actually writing a book. I um, that one was quite quick because it was just sort of you know, brain dumping my ideas. But I realized for a lot of people, they don't. Uh, not everyone reads the same way. People like to get into stories. And a lot of the books I've read, things like Brian Tracy, um, over this sort of years, they, they weaved a lovely story that really resonated and sticks in your mind. So that's where I came up with the idea of uh, the Big Dipper, which was really about this journey that we're on when we actually grow our businesses. Um, and it's based on my father's story, and I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Uh, but it's about the sort of you know, the journey that we go through. And during the lockdown, um, they, uh, they say, you know, in, in 10 years time, you'll look back on the lockdown and you'll have to answer the question, what did you do during the lockdown? So uh, I decided to write my third book, uh, which is just in editing at the moment and should be uh, published in a couple of months. Uh, and that's taken two things I love. One is business and one is golf and actually relating the two together. So I, I, when you get into writing books, there's always another book that sort of lurks up that, uh, that you need to get onto. So, uh, but we're, we're here to talk about the, uh, the middle one. So the story behind the book is, uh, I was trying to find a picture of my father actually, and he's, he's the uh, one in the middle, not the white one with the horns. Uh, it's uh, not related to, to goats. Uh, I'm, I'm the little spotty kid in the background. And um, it was really interesting because I hadn't realized it at the time, but this, this was one of the very few pictures of me and my dad together. And the reason for that is about five years after this picture was taken, my dad started a business. Uh, he actually bought a business from a man in a pub, uh, which is a bizarre story in its own, its own right. And um, he was a, a chartered accountant similar to what, what I became and he got fed up in his mid sort of 30s early 40s and wanted to become a business person so he bought this business this sign company off a man in a pub and dedicated you know his life then to that business and because the business became his number one priority me as his son became number two priority so my relationship with my father really, I wouldn't say deteriorated, but didn't grow, didn't blossom during the age of probably about 10, 11, until I couldn't wait to leave home at the age of 17. And I went, to, went off to university. And I look back on that and think, actually, one of the reasons I do what I do is to actually ensure that business owners don't forget the number one priority is themselves and their family a business is just a vehicle to get you what you want in life and if you're not clear what that is then it can take over and you just get more and more focused with the business at the expense to your own personal life your own personal fitness your personal health your own family and also and everything else that comes with it because it's it really is a, a yeah a way to actually just suck the life out of you if you let it. On the other hand, a business should be a vehicle to give you what you want in life. But many people, you know, when they start the businesses, they, they want something, but over a period of time, they lose sight of what that focus is and why they're actually doing it. And it becomes a bit of a millstone. It becomes just a job that you do. And that's not what the essence of a business was. And, and this is why I wanted to write the book. I, and it's based on my father's story about him buying this pub this uh, business from a man in a pub and the journey that he's on now his journey unfortunately after 15 years led to him actually uh giving the business away pay, well, actually paid somebody seventeen thousand pounds to actually take the business off his hands so 15 years of his life dedicated to this business 
at the expense of, in my eyes, you know, and unfortunately he's passed away, so I can't actually ask him the question, but in my eyes, at the expense of his relationship with his son. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why I wrote the book is to say, if I can help one person like my dad to actually read this book and realize that actually, you know, a business should give you more life, not take it away, then it was worth writing the book. So, so who did I actually write the book for? Well, I wrote it for business owners who want a better life. But the problem with that is none of us are really that clear what a better life actually is. We don't spend enough time thinking about you know, what it really means to us. And that's what I've learned you know, in the, in the sort of, well, 15 years I've been coaching, but a lot longer is because a business actually changes as we grow within it. For those of who start businesses from scratch, the first goal for a better life is it needs to pay the bills. Because if it doesn't pay the bills, well, we may as well go and get a job. We may as well go back and do that. Once it's paid the bills, then it should allow us to buy some nice stuff. Okay? To actually you know, buy the house of our dreams, buy the cars, boats, planes, go on the holidays that we want. Okay? Actually produce enough income that we can actually buy the things and, and have the lifestyle that we need. And some people get to this level here, pay the bills, and they stop think well that's it job done the business pays the bills that's all it can do others have got bigger goals and they say right i want to buy nice stuff and that's when they stop the actual process doesn't stop there the next level is a business should give you the freedom to choose you know freedom to choose whether you work or not work so how many hours a week do you want to be at your desk how many hours do you want to be doing the things you want to do are there other things in your life that you want to get onto? Do you want to write a book? You know, writing a book, I can tell you, take, takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, so you, you need to have that freedom to be able to do what you want to do. And once we get us the freedom, then one of the big things that I find a lot of people forget is a business should provide us the financial freedom to choose, not only just on a day-to-day -day basis, but at some point you want to be able to uh, say, right, job done, I want to go and do something else. So is it actually going to give you that financial freedom that you can actually leave your business behind and have real choices at that stage? And once you've got financial freedom, and for some of you, you might already be here or you might know people that are here, it's an extremely liberating time to be because at this stage, you're not actually working because you have to work, you're working because you want to, and at that stage, you can then, if you, if you choose to, you can actually help other people go through that process yourself. Okay, you see a lot of entrepreneurs that get to that point, you think about Dragon's Den now. These guys, they don't need to work. They don't need to invest in these businesses. Yeah, they do it because they actually want other people to have the success that they've had. And this is the, <clears throat> one of the key aspects to this book is, to help people on that journey, because this isn't a straight line that just goes start business, you know, get financial freedom, you know, help other people. This is the roller coaster. This is it's the ups and downs. You think you've cracked it. You think you're at the top of the roller coaster and then it all comes crashing down. And, and COVID was a, was a great example of this. That you know, I had a number of clients that were well on the on the way to here. Suddenly COVID comes in and the rug is pulled from under their feet. And suddenly they're back down here again, back down struggling, paying the bills. And this is the one thing that if there was one lesson I wish I could go back and tell my father was, you know, dad, you know, you've got to be a time where you actually sell this business and get out. Because if you stay playing this game long enough, another recession is going to come around and it's going to trip you up. And unfortunately, his one was the, the mid 90s recession and he wasn't able to recover from that. And I've seen this time and time again where people stay playing the game too long that eventually something happens that, you know, will, will pull the rug from under their feet. So when I wrote the book, it was really thinking, well, what sort of book, you know, would I like to read? Because, you know, I, you know I've read a, you know, a number of books over the years and the ones that I really enjoy are the ones that are actually based on a story. 
you know, there's there's an element of a story behind it that you can get into, uh, and you can you can sort of get to sort of you know like the characters, uh, and it really does help with the, the sort of reading aspect because over the years, you know, having having dealt with, I mean, I've worked with over I think probably two hundred or two to three hundred clients now. I would say a good proportion of those are not great readers. A lot are dyslexic, so then they, you know, they've probably hardly read a business book in their life, um, and therefore it needs to be something that engages with them. If it's all sciencey, like my first book, they're going to get bored very quickly and switch off. So for me, it was very much about having this story and and having my father as the main character, and uh, it's, it's quite difficult when you actually uh, write a book with names in it because you just run out of names to use. And then you start writing it and you forget who you've written about. And then you start another character with the same name. And uh, I found that very, very complicated. So you know, hats off to uh, you know, JK Rowling and those people that you know, have all these different characters uh, built into their stories. I, I don't know how they do that. But what I didn't want was it just to be a story and no science behind it. So every, every chapter, has a story is it's my father's journey and what he's doing and then i look at the science behind it why did he think that way what was his belief system why why was he doing what he was doing and over all the years that i've been coaching was to ping out all of these we call them generalized principles you know things that doesn't matter whether it's business or life you know real key things that answer that to me have answered the questions of why certain things happen so I wanted to bring the science part in it. So the first part of the chapter is the story, and then there's the science behind it, why the why these things happen. And then just because you know I'm part of Action Coach and I believe in, in taking action, and also for those people that are lazy and just want to get to the point, I came up with three points of action that everybody should do as a result of that particular chapter. So if you just do these three things, then you are going to progress and you're going to be a lot more successful than you were when you started. So, and as I said, this this sort of roller coaster. I mean, the book was called the roller coaster. The actual writing of the book was a roller coaster as well. You know, you get so really stuck into. I don't know if you had this, uh, Fiona. That you know, the first the first eighty percent is really easy. You know, you just sit there and you write, and it sort of you know flows. And I, I um, went on a book writing course before I started this. And one of the, the key things they said was uh, never read what you've written until it's finished. And it's a bit like saying, you know, when you climb a ladder, you know, never look down. So you get halfway up the ladder. What do you always do? <laughs> so, so I got about sort of 60 percent through the book and I started reading the book. And and then all those negative thoughts come in, all those uh, thoughts of doubt. This is rubbish. Who's going to read this? It doesn't make any sense. And then the book sits on the shelf for a year and you don't touch it. And then uh, it's, it's good having a, a nagging wife who's always sort of saying, you know, how's that book coming on? When are you going to write the next bit? Because it just reinforces, yeah, I've got to write this darn book. So So that went on for a few years. And it got to a point where it was just it was completely stuck and it just wasn't being written and I wasn't moving it forward. And I'd sort of lost track of where I was going with it. And I, I was a bit like you know, the character in the book. I was just a little bit lost. And suddenly a little sort of bell went on in my head that said, well, look, you teach people and you coach people that when they get stuck, what they need to do is ask for help. And the best thing you can do is, if you are really stuck at it, is find a coach to get you through, to break through that barrier. And the bizarre thing was, uh, if anyone's read the law of attraction, um, about two weeks later after this revelation in my head, a book writing coach, I mean, some of you might know her, Karen Williams, she's uh, fairly local. Um, she came to my B&I group, my networking group. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm a book writing coach. I help people write their books. And I went up to her and I said, there's a referral. I'm going to be the easiest client you've ever had. We're going to meet every single week at eight o'clock on a Tuesday. I'm going to tell you what I've written and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to write. And all I want you to do is read my book and tell me that it's good. 
Whether it's good or not, I don't care. <laughs> She's just going to tell me that it's good to keep me motivated to write it. Uh, but Karen did a lot more than that because she had all the connections, all the people that I needed to actually complete it. So um, from taking sort of pretty much four, three and a half, four years to get to that stage with, with a coach by my side, actually keeping me accountable, uh, we actually got it published. I think it was just, uh, just after six, well, we, we targeted six months. I think it was about seven or eight months um, later, the book was actually uh, published. And uh, and that moment when it's actually published, it's actually out there and somebody actually pays you money for it is a great feeling. And I think that's what sort of then leads you to write the next book. Um, so these are the chapters. There's uh, 15 chapters in total. Um, the, the concept of big, it was big improvement, uh, so business improvement and growth, which is a term I've used for many years within uh, in the role that I play. Um, but it was also to relate in fact that for, for most of us in business, it is big. You know, our business is our number one asset to give us our financial freedom. It's where we spent most of our sort of uh, day to day. You know, certainly all of our thoughts, even if we're not at work, we're thinking about it. So these are, are big decisions that we take when we start a business. And for each one of those, you know, for that journey, there was a lesson. And, and on the right hand side, you see there are the uh, sort of the 15 lessons that um, you know, are, are specific for business, but for also for anything out, outside of business as well. So that's what I, I really sort of liked about the book was the fact that it was not just for business people, but you might not have a business. It would still be relevant uh, and you'd still get something out of it for reading it. So. so what I, I sort of wasn't sure because I wasn't sure if anybody had read the book or I didn't want to sort of go through 15 chapters and <laughs> and bore you to death. I mean, if you if you want somebody to talk you through the book, um, it is on Amazon. Uh, it's on Kindle. And this is Mike Reed, who I was lucky enough when I did the uh, I did the uh, audio version during the first lockdown. And I found it very difficult to actually read the story. Uh, it just wasn't. I don't have a voice for it, and uh, I think um, you know, do it, doing the voices of the characters I found very difficult. And um, the, the guy that was doing the recording um, from from Monkey Nut uh, Audio Productions knows Mike very well. He, he made him a quick phone call and said, "Look, I'm coming down to do another audio book. Would you mind doing this one for me? It's only half the book because I did the sciencey bit, and then Mike did the story bit." So it was really nice to have that. And it, it really flows. He's got uh, yeah, a great style. And um, it was really good to have it on, you know, on iTunes, Kindle, and uh, also on the, on the website as well. But uh, so I just thought, you know, that was sort of the half hour to give you a bit of an insight to it. And I would leave it open to questions that you might want to talk about writing a book or the content of the book or anything else that you might want to talk about. So uh, as we've got a nice small group, I'll, uh, I'll put it back to Matthew. Great, thanks a lot, Kevin. And uh, thanks for taking us through that journey, which of course reflects the journey of starting a new business as well. And what's been really interesting uh, coming through lockdown is the number of startups coming out, uh, particularly in our area in the New Forest. Lots of people who've decided they don't want to get on that train up to London anymore. <laughs> Let's just stay down in this beautiful part of the world and start a business. Yep. And uh, we've got to do everything we can to support uh, the, the startups as well. But we're also running a session in a few weeks' time. The lesson, I think it's next next week's um, business support hour. The lessons that startups learn that you could put into practice in your business, even if you're 10, 20 years in. Because I think the important thing from what you're saying is you're always learning and. Uh, always trying to move on that next step um, or the next uh, hill, uh, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, if we can encourage people to keep learning, as we found through the Business Support Hour, and we've had 60 sessions of it since lockdown began, and each week, 20 minutes of input just to keep us moving on. So, no, thank you for that. And I'll, I'll let uh, anyone else with any observations or, or, or big, big questions. Sorry, I'm just on the 
Any thoughts from anyone? Andrew, just need to unmute, sorry. Yeah, I was being good, so I wouldn't make any noise while Kevin was speaking. <laughs> with the classic thing of forgetting to undo it. Um, I was going to say, I haven't really read many uh, business guidebooks, not, not least because I've always been an employee of a business, although I do find my role as sort of going out and winning work is sort of like a little micro business of its own in, in some ways. But I've read quite a few self-improvement books, and I certainly see it, see a lot of just, just the titles alone on, on the lessons, uh, certainly... Uh, some familiar topics there stop procrastinating is the one that immediately makes me feel guilty because i know i'm uh, <laughs> i'm a sucker for a bit of that and not quite making the decisions that need to be made but um yeah. is, is there a particular is there a sort of a chapter you think sort of stands out as being a really important aspect of it or or are they all inevitably i, I suppose it, it comes back to where you are and you know everyone's at a different stage on that roller coaster um you know so you know if if you're sort of sitting there thinking, well, where do I go within the role? And it's, it doesn't have to be a business. It's just in my life, in my role. Then the uh, the, the big one really is uh, it's lesson eight. So watch what pulls you. Uh, and it's it's the the, uh, the concept in there is, uh, is Newton's gravitational law. Uh, and it's about the bigger the mass, the bigger the gravitational pull. Yeah. So... If, if you're lost, if you're feeling lost in your journey and I don't know where to go, it's because you've lost sight of your goal. Okay, If you've got a really clear goal that you can hang your coat on and you're 100% committed to it and, and that's it, you don't get lost. You get stuck, you hit problems, the same problems will come along, but that gravitational pull pulls you to where you want to go. When people get a bit lost and procrastination, it's it's because you're not, the belief in your goal is not as strong as it should be. So you've got to go back and ask yourself the question, do I still want that goal? Is it still important to me? What is it? Is it big enough? You know, have I shared it with enough people? Because there's no point having a goal and just keeping it to yourself. The more people you share it with, the more people are going to help you actually achieve that. Um, so, yeah, so it was quite interesting with, with that particular chapter was, was bringing Newton's gravitational laws uh, in, into, a, into a business book <laughs> and relating it to it. So, uh, I find that very relatable because my, my youngest son, bizarrely, was talking about that very scientific concept this week, which is one of those things that you kind of find yourself being reminded about having not thought about it probably since I was at school. So, I, yeah, I think, I like I think I like I've that. got the, uh, what was it? Uh, that's an eight, wasn't it? Um, I think I've got a nice little diagram that... Uh, yeah, so I don't know if you can see, there's a nice little diagram that you can go through with your son on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so, and that, that, I suppose that was a big thing for me is pe people tell me things and say, oh, you should do this and you should do this. And my inquisitive mind is, so that's great, but why? Why, why? why do you need to set goals? What, you know, you, oh, you need to set SMART goals. Well, why do you need to set SMART goals? Somebody's come up with the acronym of SMART but why is that important? And so I've, I've very much looked into the neural science behind this, how the brain works. So um, where's the, um, uh, which chapters? Uh, yeah, so less, lesson 12, uh, select the right goals. Because our, our brains have three parts. We've got a reptilian brain, we've got a limbic system, and we've got a neocortex. Each of those set goals in different ways. So you've got to understand which part of the brain you're setting your goal from. So if you're moving away from pain, it's a very short term reptilian brain function. If you're setting your wants and desires, you know, I want the nice car, the boat, the plane, that's from the limbic system, your emotional brain. If your goals are about something bigger, you know, um, around purpose, about legacy, then that's all, all to do with your neocortex. So really understanding why we need to do these things was, was a key part to, to why I wrote the book, because a lot of people talk about it and say you should do this. Well, why should I do it? If you understand why, then I think you're in a better place to actually use the concepts uh, you know, for, for your own good. Yeah, I'm a big needer in, in why. I don't, I don't like doing things just because someone said so. Yeah. yeah. 
but it also you know the, the danger with that is that you s can sometimes dismiss things that you think oh that doesn't make any sense so you dismiss it whereas if you if you keep an open mind and go okay so that's great i don't really agree with it or don't understand it there must be some science behind it because no one tells you to do things that hasn't worked for them or hasn't worked for somebody so there must be some basis on which it does work and that's where you sort of you want to look into the into that detail and find out okay well I, I get this why does it work for me or why does it not work for me and that's why I think you can't just read one business book because one person's view of way things work won't be the same as another one's so the more you can read the more balanced view you get and then you make up your own mind of what works for you uh, in, in what situation So uh, my my wife at the moment has take she took on a cafe last year that she's worked in for six or seven years because the owner decided not to bother working through COVID. And they're based over in Wimble, and uh, the conversation we seem to have again and again is a sort of classic one. I think is she sort of keeps struggling with having time to do things and you know the issues, and I keep saying, "Well, you need to talk to someone." I haven't got time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what are they going to tell me anyway? I know that it's a struggle. I know staffing is difficult and so on. I'm like, you need to talk to someone, but I, I clearly need to find someone else to tell her because she doesn't want to hear it from me. I was going to say, co co you ne ne never coach your wife or yeah. your, no, your, I'm learning that. your sons or your daughters. or um, and, and, and to be honest, if I looked at all the excuses why people don't take on a coach, that's probably number one. Is they're only going to tell me what I already know. Uh, and the key, the key to that is coaches don't tell you. You know, coaches is about helping you to get things done. Because if you do as you've always done, you get what you've always got. So, you know, if you stay as you are, then, well, that's guaranteed it's going to happen. You know, a coach has got to find a way to, to get it so that you don't, you're not working all the hours. And, and there are certain things that need to be in place, you know. You, you've got to have structures. You've got the business that allows it. A lot of, I've probably coached over the years, a dozen people out of their businesses because their business was never going to get them to where they want to go. It's, it's just, it's impossible. You know, it's just like saying, well, I'm going to go to Scotland and all I've got is a little moped. Well, you're never going to get there. You know, don't go in a moped. You upgrade it to a car or go on a train or do something, but it's not going to achieve your goal in the time frame that you've got. Um, any other any other any other chapters that stand out to to anybody? Is, is there a chapter on um, finishing? Because I'm uh, I know my my strengths and weaknesses to, to a point, although I'm sure one of your books would point out other things, but you know, whenever you do these group dynamics uh, things, which I've done since uh, school mm. or college off and on, I always come out as the person who great with ideas, great at putting together things, but not a finisher. You know, I was the kid who'd start a model and get three quarters of the way through and then start another one. Yep. Um, is, I mean, is there a cure for that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how, good, how good are your ideas when you come up with them? Oh, they're brilliant. <laughs> okay. No, there's been some shockers. I, mean, I, look, I look back at uh, the last, um, nine, uh, however many years it is, 20, 2007 of having my own business, and, and I laugh at some of them. They're awful. But uh, there were some, you know, but they've worked. Sure. Um, on, on balance, they've worked. You know, there's more good ones than bad ones. But uh, I, I would say if, if you've done the psychometrics before, the psychometric you need to do on that basis is wealth dynamics. I've done the one, uh, the blue, red, green, yellow one. That's, that one. that's disc, yeah. which is okay. You know, that yeah. will probably put you down in the US. I of, went with that. I thought that was what, good. What colour were you? So uh, very, blue, very blue. Blue. It was about 90% yeah. blue. So, so, yeah, so you're, you're an introverted, task-focused person. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, so attention to detail, you know, actually really understanding things. Um the, the problem with that, it, it doesn't always paint the, enough of a picture. It's a, it's a quite a surface level profiling system. It's a good starting point, but for where, what you're saying there is why do I do these things? You need to go to a, an, another level 
And the, the best one, I think, is uh, they called Wealth Dynamics, uh, Roger Hamilton. Right. Um, and his whole thing is how, how, do, how do successful people build wealth? And it's not, it's not a case of you. And this does come back to a business. A, a business is a group of people. Okay, not, not one person is going to build a business that is successful. You can't do it. No, okay. if, you, if you read every, and I've read a lot of autobiographies, you know, you read Steve Jobs' autobiography. I mean, they are amazing people, extremely talented people, but they are the first people to say that they didn't do it on their own. So the key is you've got to understand that if you want to build wealth and a business, you've got to do that through the people you attract to you and build a team of people around you to actually make it happen. And, and Wealth Dynamics says you might be this type of person, therefore you need to work with this type of person because that, that yin and yang will actually help you to achieve a success. You'll never do it on your own. Um, so it's, it was a big eye-opener for me because I, I, I'm the same. I'm, I'm what they call a creative mechanic. You know, I'm great at creating ideas and I love to do the, the detail of it but I get bored very quickly. So I need people that are going to sort of come on underneath and actually complete and finish those things. Hence the book, you know, the book was never going to get finished. Great starting a book, but actually finishing it. So I needed, I knew no one else could write the book for me. So I needed a coach to actually coach me to actually get it done. Otherwise it was never going to get achieved. So, on the, the other Andrew there saying about the procrastination, there was a book a few years ago, wasn't there? Um, eat my frog or eat, eat that frog eat that frog yeah um which was all about um doing the nasty things early on in the day getting rid of them and i had a look at that book but it's just not me i i'm not saying i disagree with that book but um i just uh, prioritize yep. i don't look at the tasks for the day and think i'm going to get the horrible ones out of the way first i'm gonna i'm gonna get the most important ones out of the way first whether they taste nice or not and that's a good thing with it with a high C is you know high C's are very task focused and therefore having a, a to-do list and actually working through that is is key. What C's aren't good at often is actually looking beyond that and the big picture is is this to-do list going to get me to where I want to be? Yeah. Because we're very good at here and now. Let's fix, you know, C's love fixing things. Give me something and I'll fix it. You know, that's what I like doing. I, I get the instant gratification of actually achieving something. But often <laughs> we lose that sort of sense of the big picture of, right, if I'm fixing this, you know, what am I not doing? Yeah, and, and we, we get the short-term gratification for fixing something as opposed to the long-term gratification of actually working towards a bigger goal. Um, and it's, it's also the, what I call the technician's curse and a, a lot of businesses you know, such as yours are set up by technicians we're great at doing the job but we're not great at building businesses and, and businesses as I said need people around you so as a business owner the number one skill you need is how to recruit train and motivate people it doesn't matter what you do um, that's, that's the real key to it yeah I mean, I find that, I find that with a lot of my clients. They're the people who've been, they're very, very good solicitors, but they can't run a business. Yeah, yeah. some of them. Yeah. And, and, the, and the book on that is the E Myth by Michael Gerber. You know, he sets that out perfectly. Um, and and you, also, you look at if you look at successful people in business, you sometimes look at them and go, well, actually, you know, you're not you're not that intelligent. <laughs> but what they're good at is actually building a team around them. You know, to actually build it. I mean, Henry Ford, I don't know if you read Henry Ford's autobiography, he said, you know, he was taken to court because he, he um, one of the papers said he was, uh, I can't remember the words, but they said he was stupid. And so he took him to court and they actually fought a court case. And they said, well, you are stupid because you can't write. You can't do these things. He said, I don't need to. I've got a phone. I pick the phone up and I phone somebody who can actually do it for me. So, um, so it's it's business is about building people around you that are better than you, and then let, getting them out, getting out of their way, and letting them actually get on and do it, and leading them to to build you a great yeah. business. So. Yeah. Hi, Phil. Welcome. 
Uh, oh, can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm on mute or not. I, we can hear you, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I ended up turning up so so late. I had an urgent phone call from a customer who's thought they'd just lost all their data. Oh, and I just just rescued them, but <laughs> missed most of the meeting. I do apologize. Well, it's perfect because it's your turn turn now. So uh, away you go. <laughs> well, uh... Uh, Bill, I've recorded it for you, so we'll, I'll send that over to you later. Thank you. So um, we've got time for probably a, a couple more questions. If, anyone's got one i've got a long list of questions so i'll let anyone else go no i mean so uh, kevin this thing about not having enough time um i obviously have a professional interest running nfbp because no one has any time to come to meetings yep. even though they're very easy to come to now um and i have a problem sort of being sympathetic to that i own and run three businesses all of which are full time and I, I've never quite got this thing about time so I'm not asking for any sympathy it's just sort of my own you know I, I was in the Navy and so on one, one worked 24 7 as he did um, what is it in business people's minds I suppose it's in everyone's minds but in business people's minds that they've got no time basically it's an excuse it's an easy excuse for anything. You know, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to spend with my kids. I don't have time to for my health. I don't have enough time for my fitness. You know, it, it's a it's a very simple excuse mechanism, and we are we are wired. You know, uh, and I talk about that in uh, uh, number three, maybe uh, le lesson seven. Be seven. above the line. Yeah. So it's about uh, those people that take ownership, accountability, responsibility, and those people that live in blame, excuses, and denial. And we're naturally programmed to be below the line. An easy thing is we make excuses, we blame, or we just ignore it or deny it. So, so we've got to accept that that is the natural. It's harder to be to take account, be accountable, take ownership. These, these are hard things. Like. Diets are hard. You know, fitness is hard. Anything that's worth having is hard. You know, climbing Mount Everest is hard. Running a business is hard. You know, your kids passing an A-level is hard. So, so that's the hard bit. So it, it, it still comes back to, in, in my book, everything comes back to, it's a little, little formula that I, I use uh, within there, which is B times do equals have. So who do I need to be? What do I need to do? What do I want to have? So it's B times do equals have. And out of those three things, the most important one is the have. People that don't have enough time, yeah, are not clear on what they should be doing. Because it was, a, I think, I think I'm, we, I, I, I do a book club, as, as you know, Matt, every month and we have a book and we read the book and, uh, and then we talk about it. And this book's this. Uh, I'll put it down here. Actually, no, I've, I've got to finish it upstairs. Um, is actually uh, Duncan Bannatyne's book, "How to Be Smart with Your Time," which is a really good book. It's not what you a typical sort of time management no. book. No. It's his own. It's his own um, I can't hear you, Kevin. Have we like we can hear you, Amanda. <laughs> What's she doing? She's pushing the wrong buttons. Um, and it, it sums it up really, really well that mo most things, human beings are, are not, it's not dished out evenly. So looks, health, uh, mental intelligence, you know, everyone is given a, a, a little bit, a different mix of all of those assets. Okay. Time is the only one everybody has exactly the same. Every one of us has 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. Okay, we might live longer or shorter, but on a day-to-day, -day, on a short-term basis, we have exactly the same asset. And if you read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you know, he says the, 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 one of the main things that differentiates successful people and unsuccessful people is what they do with their time. 
and and that's why I think you know p- people forget that reading is is a is a number one asset. You are your number one asset. The, the time spent reading, yeah, pays back in dividends. Oh, absolutely, yeah. thank you. Time Thanks, spent coming to these things, you know, it, there is a payback. It's just the payback is not now. Yeah, the payback is in the future, and that's where people. It's why eating a donut gives you a. a pleasure right now but you know is going to be not good for you in the long term so there's people that are really they're not so very good for you <laughs> <laughs> or, or cookies amanda uh, or cookies <laughs> we so, should no, drink no. Now. <laughs> but if, if you've got clarity what your goal is then you can prioritize then you can make sure that you know what what you should be doing and you shouldn't be doing so. absolutely so that neatly brings us to the end of time i'm afraid um, Amanda makes amazing cookies, man's cookies. So uh, that's that's her vested interest in that. Kevin, thank if, you for your time today. That's all right. And if, if people are interested, um, next month's uh, book club is uh, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek, which is a great, uh, great little book. We've got a big event coming at the end of uh, in, on Thursday, Friday, and I run mastery workshops every other week. So yeah, if, if anybody's interested in you know sort of you know learning more and earning more then please you know drop me an email um and uh, love love to help can you direct can you direct message me your email um what's your email amanda Amanda amanda.man at mac.com amanda.man with two n's Mm. mac m-a-c-k yeah m-a-c m-a-c we just connect with you on linkedin you connect with me on linkedin yes just send me a message on linkedin uh, kevin uh, okay i'll do that okay that's that's the easiest way send, send me a message and I'd, yeah, I'd love to you know uh invite you along to to something and uh help well i can. started this crazy business a year ago <laughs> <laughs> in lockdown what a, what a great I'm, year to start a business to, i know i'm so charged by it that I, I do every single course and anything and read yeah, I could never dream that a cookie could bring me so much joy. <laughs> <laughs> so no donuts. Uh, no donuts. To... Good. And thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Thank thanks you for your time. Having me on. So we appreciate it. So... You're very welcome. What I'll do is I'll send everyone uh, the recording, uh, and I'll include your, you know, your contact details so people can get in touch with you. Yeah. And follow and up say, afterwards. If, if you want the book, it's on Amazon, it's on uh, yeah. Kindle, it's on you know, and it's on audio as well. Uh, or if you want to, if you want me to sign it, then thebigdipperbook.com, and um, I'll I'll sign it and send it to you direct. You Fantastic. That There's lo- lots of things that um, Kevin delivers through Action Coach, so do get in touch with him about that because there's lots and lots of valuable support through that network. As indeed we try and offer, but uh, Kevin's doing this, uh, you know, full time and available for you if that's what you're looking for. So next month uh, on our business book club, our business briefing is that next stage. Um, and I thought that was what Andrew uh, Prismal meant when he said, "How do you finish?" Next week we've got how do you how do you get out at the end uh, next month, and it's uh, Chris Averill, his book business. Uh, build, sell and retire. He's a local guy um, in um, the New Forest into yachting, so he's very good. Uh, and he is um, has sold his business and it's, it's, it's all about that. So build, sell and retire is what we'll discuss with him uh, next time. And of course, the business support hour returns on Wednesday when we have Ben from WPA talking to us why we all need health insurance as business people. And so nothing more positive than that. So thanks for joining us today. It's uh, really, really good to see you all. Uh, and if anyone would like to copy the recording to go over any any bits or to focus in on any bits, but again, just, just let me know. But Kevin, thank you so much indeed. Lovely. I'm thanks sure we'll see you again. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks. thanks thank you. Bye. 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 Hospital or something, or you could be what? Uh, something.